All right, so today I got another special cook going down. This time it's my infamous stuffed tri-tip. I'm actually gonna be using the tri-tip for my friends at Porter Road. We'll get into that in a little bit. I'll show you what's going on there as far as the marbling. Just excellent quality of meat. But I've been wanting to share this for a while. People have asked me before for the recipe. So I figured now would be a great time to share the details, how I actually make this stuff tri-tip, what goes into it. Another good thing too is it really doesn't take very long to go through this process. We'll end up reverse sharing it today. But with that being said, I also want you to stay tuned. At the latter part of this video, we're gonna talk a little bit about a contest. A contest that's coming up you're going to be able to win not only some goods from Porter Road, but also some other stuff that you're going to like. So make sure you watch. And without further ado, let's get into making this stuffed tri-tip. Let's go! All right, so as you can see, Port Road tri-tip comes packaged in a quality manner. That being said, uh, you can also see the meat itself. It's already trimmed up for the most part. There's very little trimming that I'm gonna have to do to this. I'm gonna try to get little, little of these pieces off here and there. But other than that, there's really not a lot that I have to worry about uh, as far as the overall trim. Now, one of the things I'm gonna be doing is using this flay knife to create the pocket uh, for this. And that'll be part of the process. But with that being said, like I said, there's not a lot to really take off of here. The one thing I did want to remark to and I want to show you is you can see, I mean, you can just absolutely see the marbling in the cut of this. That's the one thing I like about the ones from Port Road. I've had some other tri-tips, but most of them don't have that deep marbling like these do. And it's not Wagyu by any stretch, but it is, it is, it is pretty close as far as how it turns out uh, when it's all said and done. Now obviously Wagyu is Wagyu, but like I said, you can just see, look at the marbling on that. It's it's really truly is amazing. Definitely my favorite place to get tri-tip. Uh, I definitely like a lot of their different meats and cuts. So I'm gonna get this trimmed up. We'll go on from there. I'll show you how I create the pocket for this cook and then we'll get this seasoned up and move on to the next step. All right, for many of you that's never had tri-tip, I'll just tell you, uh, it's a steak that's very forgiving. Uh, it's one of the reasons I use it for this cook. And uh, one of the reasons we like it so much. It's kind of hard to get wrong. But I'm not saying it can't be done wrong. It can be. So as you can see, I'm just cutting along here, adding in a pocket. And that's going to allow me to basically stuff this. Uh, I'm going to try to go as deep as at least right here. That's going to allow me to get all the ingredients that I'm trying to get. And then what I do is it just really kind of creates a, a really cool effect. Uh, this is going to be basically set up to be, if you will, kind of like a, a fajita steak uh, tri-tip. I'm going to basically be inserting vegetables in there uh, that have been cooked down and rendered. And then we're going to fill this pocket, like I said, all the way up to about right here. And then we're going to basically let it uh, reverse sear, which is basically letting it cook indirect until such time as it's ready to put on the direct side and then we'll get that final sear in before we slice it and serve it up so i'm gonna go ahead keep on this pocket a little bit uh, the main thing is you want to do is you don't want to you don't want to puncture obviously the steak so you gotta be really careful uh how you're doing this and it's a little hard for me at this angle to get to where i'm trying so i'm trying to do it from the side normally what i do is i just kind of plane it right where i'm at and you can kind of feel See, like right there, it just gave some give. I can feel it coming in. And there you go. See, look, I'm I'm about that far in now. I'm gonna go ahead and keep working on this pocket just a little bit more, just so I can make sure I get this all the way filled as much as I can with those ingredients. And then we'll go from there. So as you can see, I got that pocket in there now. It runs pretty deep. Uh, and of course, we'll get that stuffed. Uh, and then of course, uh, go from there. For now, what I'm going to do is just basically take some of this jalapeno uh, sea salt from my friends at Guste Vite. I'm going to season that up real quick. Just like I said, we're going to kind of turn this into, I like to call it an inside-outside kind of fajita meal, so to speak. But it's definitely one of our favorites. We've done it a few times. It works. Um, now I'm going to use my own special blend of seasoning. Now we use this on a lot of meals. And we just like the heat from it, the, the flavor that comes with it. 
you can use whatever you want on your uh, tri-tip whatever you're doing i've also uh stuffed these with uh mushrooms and onions and that was really good uh, obviously it's still the same process that i'll be using today for this cook uh, you basically render down the onions and the mushrooms and then of course you uh, form them into the uh, cavity so to speak and then from there you just go ahead and uh, reverse sear it indirect and uh, it usually works out good so i'm just basically getting all this seasoning on here um, getting that all on and of course after we get this going I'm gonna go ahead, uh, get the. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and get the vegetables cut up, get those diced up, and then we'll render them down on a grill, get them all cooked up, and then we'll stuff the tri-tip. We'll let it cool down first, and then we'll stuff the tri-tip with those ingredients, and then we'll reverse sear it. So stay tuned. A lot more to come, including that contest. Don't forget to subscribe. Hit that subscribe button, and definitely let me know in the comments what you think below, and anything as far as future that you would like to see me cook. Let me know that as well. Alright, so I'm back indoors, but don't worry, just doing a little bit of this prep work, getting this ready. So listen, the thing is, I've already went ahead and diced up the vegetables. As you can see, they're ready to go. I got the bell peppers over here, I got orange, red, and green, uh, and I have the white onion over here. So I'm going to go ahead and get into it, show you how I get these vegetables prepped. They're already diced up. If you really want to watch me do that in some video, let me know in the comments below. But I didn't think most people want to see that. I know I don't. So I'm going to go ahead, get this on the skillet, get them rendered down, and then we'll get them ready for that tri-tip for this ultimate stuffed tri-tip kind of fajita meal. Just throw my butter on there. Let that get rendered down. As that gets rendered down, then basically I'm just going to take my uh, diced up bell peppers and throw them on top like that. And uh, stir them around a little bit, and that's pretty much all I'll be doing to get these rendered down. And once they're rendered down, I'm going to allow them to cool. I let them usually cool for about 10 minutes, uh, just so they're not hot, they're not heat. It's not going to do anything to the meat. Uh, but getting these rendered down, I think, is critical. Otherwise, it's kind of crunchy. I mean, if you like it crunchy, you can go ahead and stick them in there and let it roll. But for me, uh, I do like ours rendered down. It just seems to add a better uh, flavor to to the meal. So. In any case, I'm going to get these going. Next, I'll be throwing on some uh, white onion. Uh, I like to throw the onion in later because obviously the peppers take a little bit longer to reduce and get rid of down as opposed to the onion. So that's why I'm doing that. In any case, we're going to get ready to go on to the next step. So stay tuned. All right. Got those green and bell peppers, red and bell peppers and orange bell peppers going. As you can see, now I'm going to Add in the onions and essentially stir those in. And like I said, once these start to cool down, we'll pull them off, let them rest, and then uh, as they cooled off, like I said, 10 12 minutes, maybe a little longer, uh, then I'll get them stuffed into the tri tip and I'll show you how that works. These veggies have cooled down, and I'm just basically going to start taking them in here, spooning them into the steak. As I do that, I push it down a little bit each and every time just to get that cavity full with all these vegetables. And it's basically bell peppers, onions mixed together, different variety of bell peppers, obviously green, red, orange. But as you can see, I just take that, just press that down in there, and continue to do so until we get the cavity full. And then once we get the cavity full, I'll show you another little trick that I use. To kind of get this make sure it's all even inside uh, i had to learn that you know over the course of doing a few of these uh, i'm done to think of, in total now seven seven of these and uh, each time they get a little bit better of course the process is obviously getting better uh, but this is pretty fun meal definitely a cool way to entertain the family press your friends and guests and at the same time, this is uh, really not that hard. Uh, it's actually a really easy one to do. But uh, you'll see what I'm talking about at the end uh, as far as how it turns out and what it looks like. Uh, it's just, uh, like I said, it's kind of a cool way to impress, so to speak. So what I do is once I get this full, if you can kind of see, I kind of work this down inside of there. Now, it's still going to want to push up, but you just got to keep like this 
kind of like a tube of toothpaste, but you're going in reverse. And you just kind of keep pushing and pushing and pushing. What that does, it's going to fill all the way back into that cavity. And then you have all your vegetables further back. They're not just right there in the front. So, uh, I got a few more vegetables I'm going to throw in here. Just to, Cause I want to get this as full as I possibly can. It doesn't hurt the steak by any stretch. Uh, as long as they're cooled down and these are definitely cooled down. Uh, so get that in there. Now that I've got that in there, the next tip that I will share you, share with you, is I use toothpicks to keep the end closed. Now this is personal preference. You can use something else if you want. Um, I've seen people use string and other things. Um, seen people not use them at all. But for me, the toothpicks work. Uh, I just basically go here at the end diagonally, and uh, so many inches apart. You know, it's not a precise measurement by any means. And that's just going to help keep that sealed, keep all those vegetables uh, in there while this is cooking and rendering down. You won't need it when it's all said and done. The only thing I can just tell you is just. And I haven't done it, but just make sure you don't forget not to take the toothpicks out. Uh, obviously toothpicks and uh, this world can be dangerous, so we don't want somebody swallowing one of those. Uh, but like I said, that's it. I'm going to get this on the smoker and we're getting ready to rub. reach a certain temp about 110 we'll go ahead get that final sear on this bad boy we'll go from there all right so we got a nice sear on this I'm getting ready to pull this off let it rest typically I wrap mine rest for anywhere from 12 to 15 minutes and something this big such as a tri-tip but uh, we'll see how it goes I might go a little longer I'm gonna go ahead and get it off here though I got another thing to put on here so stay tuned for that all right so I've allowed this tri-tip to rest. Now I'm just going to get these toothpicks out before I slice it for obvious reasons. Don't want nobody to get choked or hurt or anything like that on this steak. And these are a little challenging to get out but not too hard. But yeah, so let's go ahead. We'll go ahead and slice this. As you know, when you're slicing steak, or at least you should, if you don't, it's okay. You want to slice against the grain, not with the grain. You can see the grain's running this way with this steak, so I'm just basically cutting in the opposite direction. Uh, also makes for a good little thing. And there you go, you can see it. I think that's a pretty good medium. Um, you can see the goods in there look really nice. And uh, from what I can tell, uh, excellent, excellent meal. So uh, definitely excited how that turned out. Um, Definitely try it if you haven't already. Yeah, so let's try tip. It turned out great. Uh, like I said, it's just a fun way if you want to try to impress and you want to show something different to your repertoire. Uh, for me, I enjoy making the stuff try tip for a variety of reasons. One, because you already have the ingredients in there, and then two, it just literally looks cool. But with that being said, uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know down in the comments below what you thought, what you think. And of course, if you have any critiques, positive, negative, it's okay. I have a thick skin. I'm very open to that. Very open to any kind of feedback. Uh, also, uh, got a huge contest coming. Promise you I'd tell you a little bit about that. So basically what it is, is the winner, uh, you'll get 20 entries for just subscribing to my YouTube channel but you will win. The winner will get a $100 gift card from Porter Road, which is amazing. They'll get $100 worth of seasonings from Guste Vite, and then you'll get a nine pound uh, bag of uh, Prime 6 charcoal, as well as uh, a chimney to go along with that. So, with that being said, that's kind of what the prize is for this situation. Wanted to share that with you, and so if you do, uh, obviously, you want a chance to win. Make sure you hit that subscribe button because, uh, like I said, it's 20 entries just for subscribing. And I think it's a great opportunity to share with others too, uh, just in you know the types of stuff that I utilize uh, in my cooks. 
uh, both Guste Vitae seasonings, obviously the Porter Road uh, quality meats, and then of course, you know, uh, obviously Prime 6 charcoal. So check it out. Let me know if you have any questions. Again, don't forget to hit that like button if you like this video. And again, let me know also in the comments what you think. And until next time, it's always good cooking.